Hi, I'm going to show you how to encode flash video for the web using the Adobe Media Encoder and Dreamweaver CS6. So usually when you're going to add video to a website, you want it to look at something like this example. Some player controls at the bottom, and when you click play, your video just plays. This is going to be a little Superman cartoon, that's the example I've got. But if you've started playing with video for the web, you know that there are dozens of different formats. You also have to worry about the plugins that actually play it, and even the audio codecs and video codecs that are loaded on the computer. Flash makes this pretty seamless and simple. It plays just about everywhere, and it's really, really reliable. Not only that, but it integrates with Dreamweaver pretty effortlessly, uh, and will play everywhere except pretty much the iPhone and the iPad. Um, for that, I really recommend you just upload to YouTube. So the first thing that we need to do is open up the Adobe Media Encoder. This comes with uh, most of the versions of the Creative Suite, and this program is fairly simple, but there are a lot of options to it. The first is uh, first thing I want to take you on a tour of is the Q panel. That's right here in the upper left. You can add as many files as you want to this, and the media encoder will turn each of the movies that you load in here into FLV files. These are different presets for the different types of files that it can output. Um, it'll actually do a lot more than just FLV files, and I'll show you that momentarily. Down here along the bottom is an encoding panel where it will show you the progress of the file that it's working on right now. First I need to add a video. In order to do that, there's a little plus button in the upper left. And this is just basically a browse button. I have an old Superman cartoon ready to go for us. And it usually takes a moment to load. Good. And there are a couple of options that you need to worry about here. First is the file format. This is everything that the media encoder will output. Now the two that I recommend that you stick with are going to be F4V and FLV. You may recognize some of the others in this list, but FLV is the flash video and it's been tried and true for many, many years. The F4V is the new flash video for high def uh, video. The video that I have today is a low def, it's a 640 by 480, so it's going to fall under the FLV category. So now that I've got that changed, I actually need to choose the, the settings and the options for this. I can choose the compression and the audio and video qualities and things like that. And though most of that is set up over here, I actually want to show you the, the options themselves. Click on this where it says Match Source Attributes. Yours may say something different, but if you click on that area, you'll get this window. Export Settings. And the way this works is here in the upper left, I've got a scrubber, so I can go through the video. I can actually crop parts of the video off, so this would get rid of the last couple seconds, and this would make it come in about eight seconds into the video. I don't really want to do that. These cue point things are for flash and some scripting things. We're not going to worry about that. In the upper right hand corner is your export settings. The only thing that really matters here right now is going to be the FLV and the rest of this is just a summary of what's going on. The important stuff in here is going to be these little tabs along the bottom. Fil filters, format, video, audio, and FTP. Filters allows you to blur the entire video. I'm not entirely sure why you'd want to do that, but you can. Format, strangely enough, is just a, a copy of whatever format you have uh, set up. Some of them have options. Video, this one's important. The basic video settings. For this one, we can resize the video. And that's actually what I'd like to do with this option. I'm going to check resize video, and then I can change the frame width and height. And I, all you do is you click on it and you click and drag, and I want this to be 320 and you'll see that the frame height automatically adjusts to 240. And you can type those numbers in as well. Then I want to get into the bitrate settings under video. I can have a constant bitrate or a variable 
bit rate. And this is how much information per second is encoded in the video file. Um, constant bit rate means it's going to have a steady level. Variable bit rate means that it will tend to vary if there is a, a uh, the credits, whether it's just a black screen, is going to have very, very high compression. It will have a low bit rate. Um, but the chase scenes, the action scenes, where lots of stuff is happening on screen, that's where it's going to use a much higher bit rate so that there's more information. CBR files, constant bit rate, tend to produce smaller file sizes, so I'm going to go with that for now. For my bit rate level, instead of high, I'm going to choose low. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that the, the bit rate, KBPS, actually changes to 256 on that option. What you'll then see is that I can go to my audio panel, and I need to try and shrink this file down a little bit more as best I can. Current output channel, change it from stereo to mono. You're actually losing an entire audio channel that way, saving a little bit of space. Uh, we won't have any nice three-dimensional audio, but for an old Superman cartoon, I'm really not going to have any to begin with. I can also change the bit rate of my audio. And because this isn't the greatest recording to begin with, 128 is not going to allow me to, to bring out any new information. Instead, I'm going to drop it down to 64 because it's already mediocre. Now my screen's a little bit cut off, but below um, below bitrate settings, a little bit further down, you might even see the um, the estimation of the file size, what it's going to end up being. The last tab is FTP. And this is completely optional. If you want this program to upload the video to your website as soon as you're done, you can have it do that by setting these in, uh, putting in these settings. Click OK, and you'll notice that this now says Custom. And what I can do is I'm going to hit this Play, which is going to start the encoding process. And you'll see down along the bottom, it's starting to scrub through this video and it's going to take a few minutes. The counter will usually count pretty fast, but um, while that's running, I want you to see what's going on. In my media file, this is the original video. It's 112 megabytes. This is the FLV that the, that the media coder is currently processing. And if I do this in detail view, you'll see the file size here. Now the, the, super, the MP4 file, the original one, is this bottom one. 115 megabytes. As it, it rounds sometimes. This other one is slowly going to be increasing. I'm refreshing this, this pane so you can see the numbers going up. But when this is done, we'll have the completed file and I'll show you how to drop it into Dreamweaver. So here we are at the end of the encoding process. The media encoder is done with the file. It took about five minutes to encode a 640 by 480 10 minute video, um, so it did really well. Here are the two files. This is my original one, the 115 kilobyte, 115,000 kilobyte one. The new one is about 25 megabytes. It's less than a quarter of the size. Now remember, I did reduce the actual dimensions of the video as well as cut back on the bit rate. So with all of that combined, I was able to knock off a whole lot of file space. Now, when you're done with these, you usually don't need the original MP4 anymore, um, but uh, the FLV is what's important to us. So now what I want to do is drop that into a web page. I'm in Dreamweaver. I've set up a new site, and you can see that I've got my two files in there. Uh, one of them is my FLV, one of them is my MP4, and I'm going to create a new document and just save it as index.html. Okay, good. The process is very, very simple. Go to Insert, Media, FLV. This is the part where Dreamy makes it nice and easy. This window requires just a little bit of explanation the video type is either progressive or streaming. Progressive is when you click on the play button and the and you can see the video buffering 
for a few moments before it starts to play. This is the most common and the vast majority of the time this is exactly what you're going to want to use. Streaming is used for things like Skype where you're trying to do live video and it tends to have a lot of stutter and jitter in it. The URL is simply for you to go and browse for the file. It will only let you pick FLV files. And then down here you can add whatever player skin that you would like. I really like the Corona Skin 3 because it has play, pause, stop, scrub, and volume control. It'll even let you mute it. Uh, scrubber is this little guy that lets you forward and reverse through the video. Uh, the other thing I like about this is when the mouse goes off of the video, this whole player control vanishes. And then when I put my mouse back on the video, it pops back up. But in all actuality, you can choose any one of these that you would like. Next, you have to tell the computer to detect the size of the video. I shrunk mine down to 320 by 240. Sorry, 320 by 240. Um, and I can simply click OK. You can see it adds it to the page. And I'm going to do a save now, file save. And Dreamweaver is going to give me this warning. This page uses an object or behavior that requires supporting files. Go ahead and click OK. What Dreamweaver does is it will create a new folder and a couple of SWF files. The SWF, is this first one, Corona Skin 3, is the controller that I picked out. So if you choose, chose a different one from that drop-down list, you'll have, it'll be a, a different name. The scripts folder, the JS, the JavaScript file, is used to control all of the Flash stuff on the page. The express install is the uh, Flash file that will try to download the latest version of Flash if you don't already have it. Uh, so let's see what this looks like. If I go to live view, it should show up. Simply click play. There we go. The video is coming through. Great. So now we can watch Superman save Lois Lane all over again. So that's it. It's all you need in order to make this file run. Now I've got my index, I've got my original FLV, and all the other supporting files that are needed to make this uh, file run. In all actuality, you can delete the MP4 file. And that's it. I've now got a nice functioning video on a web page.